Welcome back to Way of the Wrench and on today's very special episode I'm going to show you guys everything you need to know to be able to take your virtual pinball cabinet and get it ready and prepped for paint including the dreaded sanding. Let's get this over with. Now if you ask any woodworker out there or any kind of wood shop teacher the secret to making a woodworking project look absolutely amazing comes down to the prep work. Now, whether it's a virtual pinball cabinet or a coffee table, it really doesn't matter. They're all roughly the same. We want to spend some time filling any holes and dings. We want to sand surfaces that are edged together, that they're smooth and even together. We want to get rid of any surface texture issues. We want to clean up any kind of edges, make sure that any kind of problem areas are kind of dealt with before we do the finishing work, which is going to be paint. Now, do not expect to be able to just make a cabinet and throw paint on it. You are going to exaggerate all of those issues if you don't put the time and effort to sand this and make it look beautiful. And then to top it all off, because we're making a virtual pinball cabinet, once you put your vinyl artwork on it, that's going to exaggerate every little flaw as well. So at this key point, we are trying to make this look and feel absolutely beautiful. Now, if you've been following along in this build, you'll know that this cabinet was constructed using Craig's pocket hole screws. So I've got a bunch of these holes that need to be filled up. Now, I do not recommend using wood filler or any kind of body filler like Bondo to fill those holes because by the time you sand that down and you paint it and vinyl it, later on in life you're going to have some shrinkage occurring in those fills and you're going to end up with like a pucker that will be really quite noticeable later on. So what I do recommend is using an actual wood plug. Now you can measure the hole and get your own dowel, but for 12 bucks they sell these wood plugs already. So you just got to glue these into the holes and they're already pretty close, but I'll show you how you finish them up after. Now when you go to put these plugs in, you want to glue them in and make sure that you have enough glue in here that it'll bond to the plug, as well as kind of fill around there so that way when you cut it flush and sand it, there won't be big holes around it. So put some glue in the hole itself. Put some on the plug. And then this should just slide in. It really doesn't need any kind of hammered in or anything like that. And there is a flat on the plug, so just make sure that that flat is not sitting recessed underneath. Give it a little shove, and then that's it. I don't think you need to tape it. That'll work good like that. So go around and put in all of the plugs that you want to fill like that. And as you go, just wipe the excess glue so there's not a lot of extra cleanup. Now, as for whether you have to fill every single pocket hole on this entire project, here's my thoughts on it. So on the front of the panel, you are obviously gonna have to plug and sand those smooth so you don't see that. However, on the inside of the cabinet and the back and the underside and top side of the back box, you're not gonna actually see those. So do you need to do them? I guess not. However, I am going to fill every single one and here's why. Everything here is gonna get painted. So I would much rather be able to just spray a flat panel than try to worry about paint not getting into the holes and seeing that when you look at a certain angle. So for me and for another $12 of plugs and a little bit of time sanding it, I think the painting process will be much more enjoyable and I'll get a much nicer project when I'm all done by doing it that way. And every now and then, if you feel like it's just not going in far enough, just grab like a flat screwdriver and kind of just give it a little extra shove and you'll notice that it kind of drops in a bit. So most fit in pretty good, but every now and then you got one you gotta help. Now, if you run into a situation like I did where I've got intersecting plugs, then you're gonna have to just pick kind of what's the biggest one plug it first and then what I would do is just wait till it dries and then take a Dremel and just make sure that you get enough of the room out so that you can glue in the second plug and then when it's all done you may have a little bit of kind of holes there that you just use some wood filler to finish up. To 
it's been 24 hours since we glued in those dowels, so those are all set. However, they're sticking up a little bit and that needs to be knocked down. Now, the best tool for that is gonna be something called a flush cut saw. Now, the difference between this and a regular woodworking saw is that a regular woodworking saw will have some teeth that kick out like this and some that kick out like this and some are straight. And the idea is that when you are cutting, it makes a kerf or a width of cut that is just a touch bigger than the thickness of the blade so that the blade doesn't bind and allows you to keep cutting. Now, we don't wanna have a saw like that because it starts scratching up the surface when we go to cut it down. So with one of these flush cut saws, the bottom side is completely flush. There is no raked out teeth. Top side's a little bit. And the idea is that you just hold this down flat on the surface that you want to cut the piece to, that's gonna be flush to, and then just a little bit of pressure as you kind of pull it backwards slowly to start your cut, and then you just keep going until that piece cuts off. So let me show you how to do one. Okay, put the flush cut saw down flat on the surface you want, and the end is a little flexible, so you don't have to have the other end of the handle kind of scraping on your surface. Just put one finger or two fingers of light pressure, and it really wants to be cutting in the pulling action. So light pressure against what you're cutting, and just take little cuts. Don't try to aggressively cut too fast. And then, depending on your project and how detailed this has to be, it does cut both ways, but I would recommend cutting at the pull stroke first. And then once you got this, just light pressure. All right, that's cut nice and flush, maybe just a little proud. So a little bit of sandpaper on a sanding block and that'll go completely flat and hide any little kind of scuffs made by that trim saw on this front panel. Now in this case, there is a little bit of kind of wood missing here. So that's not a big deal. When we get to the wood filling part, we'll just put a little wood filler on there and sand it. You'll never even feel it. All right, let's flush cut the rest of these so we can move on. nice and flush. All right, those are all done. That took a little bit of work, but they all look great. Now there is a couple little spots that have little holes that I'm not happy about, and there's some various dings and scratches all over this cabinet. So the very next step is we are going to take some wood filler, or you can use some automotive body filler like Bondo, if that's what you'd like. And we're basically going to use a spatula and kind of spread it and put it into the spots and kind of smooth it out a bit. Key thing is make sure it's sticking above the surface, so that way when it dries, we can sand it down flush. Now, uh, if there's any other little nicks and dings, go for it. However, there might be some spots that need a little repair work. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So one of the problems you can have with this cabinet grade plywood, or really any plywood, is the top surface that is very nice and smooth and sanded and kind of blemish free is only so thin and it's glued to the under layers. So sometimes before you've gotten a chance to sand the edges, these little sharp edges can catch and that's exactly what happened when we were making this cabinet. You can see that that top veneer layer is kind of peeled back. And if we just kind of bondo this and sand it, this is just gonna come up and we're gonna have issues with paint and vinyl after. So the trick with this is get a, a piece of paper or some really, really thin kind of uh, wood and you're gonna put some wood glue right down far as you can down underneath the veneer and then get yourself some tape and put a long strip down here and put some tension on it so that you can actually get this to sit back where it was and let the glue dry overnight and then be very careful and kind of sand a little bit of a radius on the edge there so that it doesn't happen again. So we're gonna go around and fix this thing now. There we go, and we'll just leave this overnight and then peel this tape off tomorrow and see if there's any looseness. If there is, just repeat the process. If not at that point, then you can sand down and fill in the little chip outs that are missing. So go around and fix any of these that you have on your cabinet. 
All right, it's the next day, it's all dried up and no loose veneer layer. Sweet, so there's just a little hole here that will fill with the rest of the dings right now. All right, now with your putty knife and your wood filler, go around on all your cabinet parts and find any nicks and scratches and dings and missing chunks of wood and start filling them in. Now smooth them out as much as you can with the putty knife so that way you're not having a ton of stuff to sand down, but make sure that there's enough there that when it dries, you have something to sand down to the surface. So let's go ahead and do that. Mmm, better give this a little mix. It seems to have separated a little bit. And this stuff has the consistency of kind of like peanut butter, gritty peanut butter. So I'll give it a good mix before you start using it. That way if it's separated a bit, you can get it back to where it should be. Yes, we have reached the main event. It is now time for sanding. Get yourself psyched up because it's the most boring thing ever, but it's needed and it's gonna make this thing look amazing. So let me teach you the basics of sanding. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the sandpaper itself. Now on the back of the sandpaper, there will be a number. This is the grit. The higher the number, the smoother the finish it's going to leave on your project. Now you don't have to go out and buy every single sandpaper grit ever made for this project. You really only need three or about four and I'm gonna tell you what they are and talk about them as I go. The very first one is 80 grit. Now this is about as rough as you're gonna to wanna to go. You go any rougher than this, you're gonna start leaving really big scratches on your cabinet. And this is kind of only really gonna be used for any kind of heavy kind of lips that have to be sanded down, uh, things that are sticking up quite high. This is gonna take off the material really, really fast, but might possibly leave some scratches, so be careful with it. You're not using much of this, maybe only like 5-10% of the sanding is gonna be done with this. Now, the bulk of the sanding is going to be 120 or maybe 150 grit sandpaper. This is gonna leave you a nice smooth finish, yet be coarse enough that it's not gonna take forever to do. So that's 120 or 150 grit. Now, once you're kind of getting to the final kind of sanding grit, you're looking at something like 220 or 320, that would be good. This will be kind of like the last sanding that you're going to do and it'll be a very, very smooth finish and it will take a little bit longer and it might be prone to kind of starting to get plugged up with the dust. So either keep it clean um, and make sure that it doesn't have any kind of chunks of wood sawdust that gets kind of built up, otherwise that can cause some scratches. Now, one of the other grits that you might possibly want to do, this would be saved for the very final sand on top of paint, which is a 400 grit. I don't think you need to go any more than that. And once you start to get into the 400 and 600 grits, things like that, they start to switch to a wet, dry sandpaper. So usually it's got a blue back, but it'll say that it's wet or dry. The benefit of this is, remember how I just talked about how the sandpaper can plug up? Well, the benefit of doing wet sanding is that it prevents that plugging action from happening and then you don't end up with that, those scratches. So you can use just water or you can use a little bit of a soap mixture. You just spray onto the project. The key thing is that you keep it wet and keep it clean as you're sanding. Now, like I said, this would be probably the very last sanding that you're gonna do on the final kind of top coat before you put your vinyl. Now, one other thing I would add to the sandpaper is people are very prone to kind of rush through to get to the end grit because it's a lot of work and we just want to get to the end and sand. However, if you have scratches that are deep and maybe caused from like the original 60 or 80 grit that you were using, 
do not expect to go right to 400 grit and just sand and sand until it comes out. The general process is you go through the first grits and leave sanding marks that are only caused by that 80 grit and then you switch up to the next sandpaper grit and then you only leave what's caused by the 120 or 150 and go slowly through the grits until you finally get to that 400 grit and that is the surface is completely 400 grit and no other scratches. So don't rush that process otherwise you're going to just have all these deep gouges and scratches visible when you do your final sanding. All right, now as for the actual sanding itself, do not expect to just put the sandpaper on the surface and start to get it to sand, because it just doesn't work. You're gonna have to at least fold it into thirds so that the rough texture of the sandpaper grips itself, and that way you can actually sand. Now, this kind of hand sanding, I do not recommend because you are going to hate sanding. Your fingers are gonna hate you for it. But the other thing is, your fingers and palms are not actually flat. If you look at the pads of your fingers, they're kind of curved. Ooh, I am curvy. So what you're trying to do is sand those curves into your surface, and that's not really what you want. So I don't recommend sanding like that. What I do recommend at a minimum, if money is tight and you're doing this all by hand, is get yourself a sanding block. So it doesn't have to be big, it's just an offcut from the table saw, nice flat surface, and big enough that you can take your sandpaper and wrap it around so that it can grip itself. And then you can grab it from the sides, and when you are doing the sanding, not only is it not your fingers doing that friction, this is a nice flat surface that you can expect to get from this sanding process doing it like that. Now there are gonna be some things on this cabinet that we are going to want to hand sand with a block and I will show you that when we get to it. That way we are not causing damage to the veneer using an orbital sander. Now doing this entire cabinet by hand is a lot of work but it could be done for practically free if you have a little bit of money and you can afford or you can borrow a palm sander or an orbital sander from somebody that would be ideal so let me show you that. So this is a palm sander you can also get orbital sanders and the idea is you put your sandpaper on underneath and when you turn it on it vibrates and moves it around way quicker than you can and also does all that motion without you having to do it. Now all you have to do is move this around the surface evenly. Now, these are not that expensive. They're about 60, 70 bucks Canadian, and I would just go for a corded version. Don't bother getting the battery ones unless you already have that system. And you can get ones that have little bags on here to help collect some of the dust. It will not collect 100% of the dust, but it does a little better than not having it. And then there's two major types of how the sandpaper connects. You got this type here where you undo these little levers on the sides. And then that allows you to undo the sheet and then cut yourself another quarter sheet and put it back on and make sure that these hold that paper in, in place, like that. And the other type is some hook and loop kind of Velcro material and usually those are the circular ones. And all you do is you tear off the old sheet and stick on the other one centered. Um, I tend to find that these are a little bit cheaper uh, the sandpaper is a bit cheaper as opposed to the Velcro ones, which can be three, four dollars each piece of sandpaper. Now to make yourself a nice accurate quarter sheet of sandpaper or even just to cut yourself up smaller pieces for the sanding block, you can go like this and kind of just get the halfway point and kind of just make a little crease, make a little crease, do the same this way and this way. And once you got those lines, get yourself a nice sharp metal ruler, put it on those crisp creases you made and hold the ruler down nice and tight and just tear up away. It leaves a nice cut. And then same thing this way. And there's your quarter piece ready for your palm sander. And to put that new sheet on, just undo the levers on the front end or the back end. Put that end in. Make sure it's sitting on the actual sanding pad surface. And then clamp that side. And then wrap it around nice and tight to the other side. Leave that arm out. Like that. And then make sure it's nice and tucked in tight. You don't want this surface kind of loose. And then lever that one tight. There we go. Ready to go. And if you find there's a lot of play in here after that, go back to the first side you did, undo the lever arm and just push it in a little bit more and get rid of all that looseness and then reclamp it and that should be good to go. All right, here we go. Let's sand those spots down that we put the wood filler on and see if there needs to be any reapplication of some stuff we've missed. And other than that, here we go. Are you ready? You ready? Let's get it on. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, not without some protection.
You know, this is working, but it's taking a lot longer than I'd like. So time to Viking raid the wood shop and see what they have over there. Woohoo! jackpot. Not only did they have an orbital sander, they had a Festool orbital sander and a matching HEPA vacuum filter attachment so that as you were sanding, all of that dust is gonna get sucked up and into the vacuum. Pretty sick. Now, you don't need a setup like this. Probably a $60 or $70 orbital sander will do just as good, but this is pretty awesome. Let's give this a try on the cabinet. Oh my God, this is gonna make very quick work of this cabinet. I highly recommend you get an orbital sander. Uh, we're running 80 grit on here right now, which seems really aggressive, but it's knocking down this filler really, really nicely and really quickly. So let's carry on. Wow, I am super impressed by this Festool orbital sander. Not only did it do very quick work of this cabinet, I have just completed sanding the entire inside of this cabinet and it is spick and span. It literally was vacuuming the dust in the cabinet and whatever dust I was creating from the sanding. And it's spotless in here uh, and it was barely making any dust. You could probably do this inside your house and not even notice dust anywhere. Really impressive. I am super impressed. Honestly, this orbital sander is doing a great job. Whether you put the edge end grain to the side or to the front, I'm glad I left this out just like a touch, like probably like half a millimeter. The orbital sander knocked it down really, really quickly. And you know that kind of rough texture on the edge end grain of plywood you could have? This is totally dead smooth and dead flush and any little kind of nicks and stuff like that have been uh, absolutely eliminated because of the wood filler. Awesome. This is gonna look great under this vinyl. Now I've got this cabinet on its side so we can talk about this bottom edge here. Now the top layer, the veneer layer of your plywood is very susceptible to getting chipped off. It just takes like some clothes to rub against it or maybe when you lift this with a pinball dolly, you can catch the edge and tear out not only the wood but the paint and your vinyl artwork. So to help keep that from happening, we are going to sand a 1 8 inch 45 degree chamfer on this edge and do not use an orbital sander for this. It's going to go too quick and too aggressive and you might actually tear the veneer layer out. So you're going to use a hand sanding block and go with the grain so that you're not accidentally going like this and lifting the veneer layer off. So let's go around and do that on all the bottom edges and near the corners where the legs are you can do a little bit of this but I wouldn't go as much as an eighth of an inch just kind of very softly round over the edge a little bit. Now with the main cabinet, the back box is gonna need all of those plywood edges softened as well so we don't have tear out and don't forget it's inside and outside. And another thing to think about, wherever we're putting our T-molding, that T-molding will go right over a 90 degree sharp corner. However, if you can soften that corner a bit, it will help make it so that that T-molding doesn't have to have a big crease in it and a little buckle. So soften those corners as well.
All right, at this point, the entire cabinet has been filled and sanded all the way to 80 grit. So at this point, I highly recommend that you jump up to 120 or 150 grit and hit everything once again with the orbital sander. Now, this is also gonna give you a chance to do another once over. Make sure you haven't missed any nicks or dings or missed a little chunk of wood filler you forgot to sand down. And then at that point, there may be some other little things. So keep your eye out for any little fixes and extra glue drips that you need to scrape out and things like this. Go around and check all the slots that you're gonna be using for your T-molding and make sure that nothing's in there like wood filler or in this case, there's a little bit of glue that's been put in there. And at this point, you can take a small file like I've got right here, a legal file, or you can use a blade and start cutting that out so you don't have any issues with your T-molding sitting down. All right, now because I bought the cabinet grade plywood, my external surfaces where that vinyl artwork are gonna go are already pretty smooth. And I'm gonna give this a once over at about 150 grit. However, if you were not able to purchase the big expensive cabinet grade plywood and you got something a little cheaper, it's going to have some surface texture and wood grain kind of there. So you need to get rid of that, otherwise it's going to show through your vinyl. So best option for that is get a massive tub of wood filler, or you could use automotive body filler, like Bondo. And you're going to basically treat the external surfaces of your cabinet like a birthday cake, and you're going to ice this thing completely, try to smooth it out as much as possible, let it dry overnight, and then sand it down completely smooth with probably about 220 grit. But like I said, I have very nice surfaces with this cabinet grade plywood, so that is not needed for me. And to top it all off, next video when I show you how to prime and paint this, I'm using a sandable primer that is going to absolutely get rid of anything that's there, so we won't see that. It's a wrap in another video from Way of the Wrench, this time on how to prep your virtual pinball cabinet so that you're ready for paint. And we are finally done all the sanding, yes! Actually, not really, because next video we're gonna show a little bit more sanding in between the paint coats, but nowhere near as much sanding as we have previously done. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, put them down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram, that way you can see all the cool stuff going on in the shop in between videos. Till next time, take it easy.